Welcome to Franchise Marketing Radio, brought to you by SEO Samba, comprehensive high-performing marketing solutions for mature and emerging franchise brands. To supercharge your franchise marketing, go to seosamba.com. That's S-E-O-S-A-M-B-A dot com. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Franchise Marketing Radio, and this is going to be a fun one. Today on the show, we have Jeremy Morgan with WellBiz Brands. Welcome. Hey there, it's good to be here. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to, but before we get started, tell us a little bit about WellBiz Brands. How are you serving folks? Yeah, WellBiz Brands is a franchisor of five different wellness and beauty brands, uh, including Dry Bar, Amazing Lash Studio, Radiant Waxing, Elements Massage, and Fitness Together. So across the portfolio in the five brands we have, we have nearly 900 locations, uh, about 500 franchise owners, and uh, primarily serving a high-end consumer, uh, female consumer in a membership model context. And it's it's just a really, really uh, fun group of, of concepts that we built together. Can you talk a little bit about um, how it got started? What, was there a first brand or was this always kind of built as this kind of a conglomerate? Yeah, it's our first brand started um, back in the 90s with Fitness Together, and it has been an M&A approach to, to bring these brands together under a common platform. All of our brands were founder started, and they all, all the founders were uh, service providers in the various modalities that we do. So as an example, Ali Webb uh, was a cosmetologist that more or less pioneered the idea of blowouts and built the dry bar brand. Um, similarly, Jessica Lee did that with eyelash extensions as an esthetician in the eyelash extension category. And so um, WellBiz is just very uniquely positioned to take um, a brand that was started by a founder that got traction in franchising, that has built a franchise community, and really help it scale and, and, and take those brands to the next level. Now, is your potential franchisee, are they um, someone who's looking at kind of the portfolio as a way to grow their own wealth? Or is it something that they go in as, oh, I'm the fitness together person and that's what I'm going to kind of build a fitness together empire? Or are they kind of mix and match? It is mix and match. So we have a lot of a lot of franchise owners build their business empires within one brand and really get focused on one specific concept and will go and sign an initial agreement for you know maybe two or three units and build from there. Um, as we have added new concepts to the portfolio, Drybar we acquired in uh, just over a year ago. Um, Radiant Waxing we acquired back in the summer. Those were both added this year. We have started to see our franchisees in the elements and Amazing Lash and Fitness Together concepts latch on to building uh, those as well within the same shopping centers. And so some folks really, really like the idea of having very close proximity, have all the concepts in kind of all their back in their backyard um, and be able to work uh, on those um, all together. It's, it's interesting, um, particularly the beauty brands um, use the same type of service providers, uh, Amazing Lash and uh, Dry Bar, both leverage cos- cosmetologists, Amazing Lash and Radiant Waxing, both leverage estheticians. And so there's a lot of synergy that comes uh, for some owners working across the portfolio uh, with with multiple concepts. And also, uh, I would imagine it's a similar customer. So this same customer could be a customer from each of the brands. It is absolutely the same customer. So all of our concepts are inc- incredibly female centric, dry bar and amazing lash and are both effectively 100 percent. Um, radiant waxing is about 85 percent female and elements massage is about 70. Um, and these are all kind of upper income uh, wellness and beauty conscious consumers that, that spend a lot of their wallet on how they how they take care of themselves and how they look. Um, and it is absolutely a, a very common customer across the across the platform. Now, is this when a franchisee is considering this, is that something that is, um, I would imagine, a great selling point is if you kind of bundle some of these together, the effort to get one customer is really you're getting three customers, you know, they're kind of going across three uh, brands. Yeah, absolutely. So I'd say there's a big part of the value proposition is that also, I think just from a from a WellBiz platform standpoint overall any franchisee that comes into any one of our concepts really is leverage being able to leverage the learning that we have across all concepts. 
Uh, we have a big digital marketing team that focuses on how we drive consumers into all of our concepts. And, you know, we operate as a 900 unit franchisor. And when you compare that to um, a, a smaller franchisor that might have 50, you know, Radiant was a 50 unit uh, concept as a standalone and the resources and expertise that we're able to bring to bear both with people and the amount of money we're able to spend and, and the scale that comes um, from just cost efficiencies on, on the buying of digital and things like that are really pretty remarkable on, on what we're able to bring to a franchisee on any one of these concepts along the way. Now, can you share a little bit of insight of why being a membership-based business is so effective in today's world? So a membership-based business is, is really helpful in a couple ways. Um, uh, first of all, you know, membership in general has and, and recurring revenue in general has just really taken off as a business model, whether it's Peloton or Netflix or Amazon Prime, uh, you know, or our concepts uh, in Elements Massage and Amazing Lash and Dry Bar. So, um, you know, consumers have gotten very accustomed to a membership driven approach. One of the things that the membership does is it really um, encourages consumers to make the service that we're offering a part of their regular routine. Um, it's the more that a consumer uses our service, the more likely they are to stick with their membership for a long time. And so that built in approach where, Hey, I'm a member. I get a service every month. I need to come in and get that service. It, it reminds them how much they enjoy that service. Um, that, that delight they get from kind of taking care of themselves or treating themselves um, along the way. So that's a big portion of it from a consumer value prop standpoint. And then for the business owner, of course, the, the predictability of those recurring revenues is just incredible. Um, being able to rely on um, a certain amount of cash flow coming in every single month, irrespective of what's going on with the weather, irrespective of what's going on uh, on the number of weekends in a month, um, irrespective of what's going on with holidays, it really builds a more steady approach to your cash flow that allows you to more easily you know, make your plans on how you're going to pay rent, how you're going to pay your teams. And it, you know, overall just builds the business more quickly. Now, if there's any uh, emerging franchisors listening to this, is there any advice you can give them on how to kind of position your business as being membership based uh, or membership friendly? Well, I think that it starts with just really making sure that the service that you're providing is, uh, makes sense to be in a membership driven approach. Um, and I do think that the vast majority of, uh, of retail concepts out there, there is probably a membership angle that can be taken, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a monthly approach, right? I mean, we, everyone pays for Amazon prime once per year for their subscription. Um, you know, when you go into an elements massage or a dry bar, you might pay $80 for one service every month. Um, but in other concepts, it may make more sense to have a lower membership fee to access a suite of services um, as, as an example. So I think part of this is constructing, it starts with the consumer, constructing a membership program that makes sense to enhance a consumer value proposition. And if you can do that, you can sell memberships. And if you can sell memberships, then you can build this great flywheel ecosystem for your biz franchise business owners and, and help them, uh, you know, make more money and, and be more successful on, on, on their cash flow. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, Dry Bar. Uh, since taking that over, now there's a, a big international push. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. So Dry Bar has just been an amazing acquisition for us. I mean, first of all, what a crown jewel of a brand in general. I think it's about a 10-year-old brand that really has captured the hearts and minds. It's a premium beauty brand at a very accessible price point. Um, we are very fortunate to be able to uh, partner with them and, and bring them into the portfolio more broadly and and really be pushing for a broader franchise growth strategy um, in uh, across the country and across the world. Um, in the first year that we have owned it, um, we have sold over 50 franchise licenses, um, which is uh, about triple what they had ever sold in previous years. And part of that is because of the international push. We just opened in the United Kingdom uh, just in December. We sold a 10 or 12 unit uh, agreement with Harrods 
uh, probably the most well-known, prestigious uh, uh, retailer in the United Kingdom, agreed to uh, strike a deal with us. It's the first time they've done a franchise deal. Um, Dry Bar is now in uh, located in their flagship Knightsbridge location which is just incredibly exciting. They're selling dry bar retail products um, in their beauty section, but they're also providing services um, and really introducing blowouts to the UK, uh, UK consumer. Um, beyond that, Harrods is, has introduced a, a new retail concept called H Beauty. And H Beauty, uh, for the US listeners out there, is uh, somewhere between an Ulta Beauty and a Sephora. That's uh, in that general genre but they also have services that are offered within those locations. Um, and Harrod's intention is to put dry bar into each one of those H beauty locations that they build um, over the next several years. There are three of them that are opening here this month in January, one in Edinburgh in Scot- in Scotland, um, one in Lakeside in London, one in Milton Keys. And there's another couple that are going to open by mid year. And so you know, by by mid year, we should have six locations up and going in the United Kingdom broadly, um, with plans to to get another half dozen or so open over the coming years. Well, congratulations on that. That's exciting. Was that the first time that you have ever kind of partnered with a brand like Harrods? It is. So it's it is a first for the dry bar dry bar concept, and it was the first for uh, first for Wellbiz in general. Um, Wellbiz has a. Uh, Two locations in Vancouver outside of the U.S. Um, these 900 locations we have are primarily U.S. domestic, um, and this is our first foray into Europe and our first time partnering with such a prestigious operator such as Harrods. Now, is uh, do you see that as a future growth channel for you to go international with those kind of partnerships with your other brands? Potentially, for sure. I think that um, we're most when, when we look for franchise partners in general, we're always seeking for the type of operators that understand how to how to execute the services we provide really, really well. Um, that's the most important to us. Um, and, you know, it, and we start with that versus a specific geography. So if, if an incredible franchise operator were to approach us in Australia, absolutely, we would talk to them. If that came in Saudi Arabia, absolutely, um, we would we would engage in discussion. But they have to be willing to really, really embrace what has made Dry Bar Dry Bar or Amazing Lash Amazing Lash, um, and really work with us hand in hand on how we introduce these services to a new international consumer. Um, you know what it means to get blowouts or eyelash extensions or massages is often different in other countries than what it means in the U.S. Um, and we really want to be able to lean on those franchise partners to help educate the consumers on, on how um, these brands that we've spent so long developing can be brought to life uh, in a new country. I would imagine that's um, really an important component to a, a solid relationship is to understand culturally how the brand's going to fit in and how the consumer is going to interact with it. And it, it's probably going to be different than it is in the United States, but you can learn from the United States. So there has to be kind of a give and take from both sides. That's absolutely right. And I think with, with, with dry bar in particular, we think that there is just an enormous opportunity to bring the brand globally. Um, But part of what comes to that with, with that is really making sure we're being thoughtful about the different hair types um, that women have in in different markets. Um, textured hair has a different approach on how you um, want to achieve the various looks than uh, than than uh, what we have often in in the U.S. And so it's a approach that we really want to be thoughtful that we have the right products, we have the right looks that we can do, and we can really make sure that you know everything we're doing is layering up to this idea of having our guest walk out of there feeling really confident, really happy about how they look and, and, and how they feel. Right. So the outcome that your guest desires might be similar, but how you get there might be a little different and you have to kind of be open to listening and learning uh, how, what makes those different countries unique. And you might have to communicate a little different. It might be the same thing, but it might be just maybe communicated a little differently. A- absolutely right. I mean, I've, I've spent, a lot of time developing brands and launching them in new markets over my career. And what you just said is absolutely just the, the cornerstone of success for any brand that looks to go international. You have to 
figure out the things that um, you absolutely have to stay true on for your brand um, and at the same time remain flexible on the things that are really going to make it work and come to life in another market. And you know, there's no predetermined roadmap for what exactly what that looks like for any one brand or any one market um, that you go into. And I think having an open mind and finding the right franchise partners that can help work with you arm in arm on that, that you really trust, that really understand those consumers in, in those markets um, is, is really where the, where the success lies. Yeah. And that's why you got to kind of wait for your pitch because there's probably a lot of people clamoring to get involved with you, but you got to make sure they're the ideal fit. You, you are, you are absolutely right. There's no question if, if, uh, I wanted to just simply sell dry bar to uh, anyone who wanted to take the license rights. I could probably do that quite quickly. Um, however, we're really continuing to build the brand for the long term. We think it's you know the second or third inning of a multi-decade phenomenon in beauty and wellness. Um, we have really anchored on brands that we think are best in class on the services that they provide, and we're willing to be very very patient on finding the right franchisees that are able to bring those brands to life in the markets where, where they operate. Well, congratulations again on the success. And thank you so much for sharing your story. If somebody wants to learn more about the opportunities uh, with Drybar and all the brands, can you uh, share a website? Absolutely. So um, all of our brands broadly, uh, the best entry portal is wellbizbrands.com. And if you are interested in Drybar specifically, um, go to drybarfranchising.com. Well, Jeremy, thank you again for sharing your story. You're doing important work and we appreciate you. Thank you so much, Lee. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on Franchise Marketing Radio.